while that's all roaring along, let's go and log into my Raspberry Pi and we'll go and monitor what's happening there. So, okay, so here I'm just observing um, the log to see if it's able to acquire credentials. So at the moment, um, there's, there's a queue that's set up and it's way, this Raspberry Pi is waiting for our infrastructure to go and inform us where we can go and find um, the, the credentials so that we can essentially set up a channel to sign our certificate. So we're going to utilize um, an SQS queue to, uh, for our Raspberry Pi to go and say, hey, this is my public key. Um, can you go and sign it for me? And then uh, we're going to we're going to take that message from the queue. We're going to sign that public key and we're going to provide a signed certificate um, back to the Raspberry Pi so that it can log into the VPN and get all of the required credentials. So once the service is installed, um, which the, the instructions are in the readme for how to do that, it's two lines essentially. Once that service is installed, you are able to destroy all the infrastructure and like tear it down and build it back up. And the next time it's built back up, we can still use that channel again to exchange certificates. So the, the goal here is for us to be able to have nothing running when we're not using our infrastructure. The only stuff we really want to be paying for uh, in an ideal world is just our uh, cloud storage, like our S3 buckets. Um, you can think of that as like your Dropbox or you know your you know what you might normally you uh, refer to as cloud storage. So then when we spin everything up again, that's when we're paying for um, you know our most costly expenses being our uh, NAT gateways, which are cheeky ones. They're uh, pretty expensive if you don't pay attention. Uh, and we've got all our instances that are running our infrastructure. And all of these are, you know, they're, they're, they're quite small systems. So, you know, don't get concerned when you're seeing, you know, this many systems running. They're actually, uh, they're not very costly to run. Oh, here we go. So see that SQS notified? That's our message queue. So that is going and essentially establishing the connection between our, um, our Raspberry Pi and our infrastructure in AWS in order to exchange uh, certificates so that it can get what's required to establish a VPN connection with our infrastructure. And what that lets us do is it means then I can have as many render nodes on my own network as I want and I can have it shared with my uh, AWS infrastructure. All right, looks like it's ticking off. It's gotten the certificate that it needs and it's going and configuring the VPN on the Raspberry Pi. So all of this right now is um, the initialization data required for our, um, our spot fleet uh, or our render nodes. So our render nodes use what's called a spot fleet and we automatically set up the template uh, for that spot fleet so that when renders arrive in the deadline database queue then the spot fleet goes and uh, requests instances to go and um, handle those workloads for the lowest possible price um, that's possible that's available in AWS at that time so those are preemptable instances and that's how we're able to save on cost when we're when we're rendering so it looks like we should have our um, our vpn is up so this service that we've got here it's continuously monitoring to determine if the vpn's up and if it's got current uh, credentials if each time you destroy and spin up your infrastructure, um, the credentials required for the VPN change. So that's why we monitor if those credentials are still current and we detect when uh, infrastructure spins up again in order to acquire new credentials and reconfigure the VPN. So 
that should mean that now that that's up and it looks like we've got a deadline database that's up we should be able to ping that so that's the private IP address of our deadline database sitting in a private network and there we go we can ping it 25 milliseconds away in Sydney so that essentially means that our private our, our network here at my home is able to uh, use that deadline database and submit jobs to it uh, and it's available as if it were set up on on my uh, own network so things are moving along really well all of my efforts are about trying to make this easier and easier for other people to use at this point um, although the infrastructure has been usable for myself for quite a while everything I'm doing is trying to make this easier and easier for other users to get their hands on it as soon as possible. Uh, I have a goal that essentially by the end of the year, I really want this to be as easy to use as possible. So all of my efforts are about how do I eliminate the steps? How do I eliminate the setup steps and, and make them as, as simple as possible? Uh, after that point, it's also about uh, being able to handle things like Windows better, which it's possible to do now. It is possible to use a, a Windows machine on site and uh, connect to this infrastructure, but I want it to be uh, a lot easier for people to do in order to get involved. So thanks everyone for your time and I look forward to showing you more next time.